Uh, thank you si ano si Dani kasi napalitan niya kaagad yung projector kasi nag-aalala ako kanina, medyo malabo, di ba? Eh <clears throat> yung joke ni Pastor Ting, sabi ko baka malabo, tapos malabo rin yung sermon. <laughs> so hopefully <clears throat> malinaw na ngayon tapos <laughs> Sana hindi malabo, no? Sana may ending, no? <coughs> oh, <coughs> testingin natin kung gumagana. <coughs> Saan ba yun? Ah, on ko muna, no? Yun. Uh, <coughs> ang, ang topic natin ngayon ay <coughs> uh, Rejected ang tinitle ko, pero uh, this is the story of King Saul when he was uh, uh, rejected. So, Saul, Saul was rejected. So, pero nilagay ko lang rejected para maganda kasi yung tatak na, pati ba, tinatatakan na rejected. Uh, testingin ko lang. Yan. <clears throat> so, siguro lahat tayo familiar dun sa story ni King Saul. Uh, short na kwento, di ba, During the time na when the Israelites walang leader at the time uh, panahon ni Samuel no uh, at that time si Samuel ang, ang ang parang tumatayo na judge ba or leader ng mga Israelites and then nung tumatanda na siya uh, sa Samuel chapter 8 nakalagay doon na inassign niya yung mga anak niya uh, bilang mga leaders din sa mga Israelites kasi yung mga anak niya, hindi katulad niya. Medyo, medyo siguro pasaway ng konti, hindi sumunod sa kanya. Uh, iba ang patakaran nila, medyo <coughs> uh, nagkakaroon ng bribery, saka uh, mali-mali ang mga uh, judgment nila. So yung, at that time, yung mga Israelites, nang hingi ng ano, lumapit kay Samuel, sabi, uh, Samuel, tumatanda ka na, uh, pwede bang ano uh, saka yung mga anak mo eh, hindi mo katulad uh, mag-appoint ka na lang ng ano ng ng king sa amin katulad ng mga nation around us sabi so medyo nadismaya si Samuel ni report niya kay Lord nagpray sabi ni Lord sige pa- pa- payagan mo or payagan natin so at that time si King Saul uh, uh, bata pa siya hindi pa siya king. Ano? So sabi ni Lord, nakita sila ni, parang si up si Samuel and, and Saul. Si Saul at that time is uh, inutusan ng tatay niya, Benjaminite, uh, Benjamite? Benjaminite? Ba? Si, si Saul. Ano? So inutusan siya ng tatay niya kasi nawawala yung donkey. May mga donkey na nawawala. So inutusan lang maghanap ng donkey. Uh, at Tama-tama naman, napunta sa silang lugar na nandun si Samuel. Sabi nung alala niya, uh, mayroon ditong prophet uh, marunong. Pwede natin tanungin kung baka maki- alam niya kung nasaan yung nawawalang donkey. So nung nag-meet up sila, in-invite siya ni Samuel, later on, ina- inanoint na lang siya na, na, na king. So, ganun lang, ano? inanoint na. Kasi sabi, yan, inanoint po yan. Kasi si Samuel ay... <clears throat> Uh, kung mababasa natin doon, si Samuel is uh, a young, handsome Israelite. Siya yung, ah, Saul. Si Saul, sorry. Si Saul siya yung, ano, kasi sabi ni, ni ng mga Israelites, bigyan niyo kami ng hari, katulad ng mga uh, nation around us. So, ang binigay sa kanila, pero may warning, no? Niwarningan muna sila, oh, pag bibigyan ko yan ng hari, ganito yung gagawin niya sa inyo, yung gagawin sundalo yung mga anak niyo, kukunin yung mga ganyan-ganyan. Sige, okay lang sa amin. Ganon sila. So, binigyan. So, si King Saul, uh, young, handsome man na matangkad, sabi, uh, at, uh, head taller than the rest of the Israelites. So, matangkad siya at saka tall, tall handsome siguro yun. So, ganon ang nangyari. Naghanap lang siya ng donkey, naging king na. <coughs> uh, pero hindi ship, ano? Naano ko lang kanina, donkey, bakit hindi kaya ship yung nawawala? So, later, so ganon. So yun ang short story. Kaya naging king na si, si King Saul. Inanoint siya, tapos uh, nag, uh, nagkaroon na ng uh, pagkakataon na uh, in-inspire siya ni Lord na 
i-lead yung mga Israelites nung uh, uh, i-attack na nila yung mga Amalekites. So, pupunta na tayo doon sa chapter 15. Ang main verse natin ngayon ay 1 Samuel 15. Next week, uh, katulad ng assignment natin, sabi ni Pastor Ting, ay chapter 16. So, ito yung chapter 15 tayo. <coughs> Basahan natin, ano? <coughs> Malit pala, no? Samuel said to Saul, uh, verse 1 yan, verse 1, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them, put them put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. So yun yung utos sa kanya ni Lord. Lahat, totally destroy. Verse 4, So Saul summoned the men and mastered them at uh, Tilaim, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 from Judah. Saul went to the city of Am- Amalek and set an ambush in the ravine. Then he said to the Kenites, go away, leave the Amalekites so that I do not destroy you along with them, for he showed kindness to all the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites move away from the Amalekites. Ito yata yung mga Kenites na uh, nag, uh, tumulong sa mga Israelites when they uh, came out of Egypt. So ganun din, in his prayer niya. Verse 7, then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from the Havila to Zor, near the eastern border of Egypt, he took Agag, king of the Amalekites, Amalekites, alive. And all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. So, iniwan niya yung king ng uh, Amalek- Amalekites. But Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and cattle and fat calves and lambs, everything that was good. This they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. So, iniwan nila yung king, hindi nila pinatay. Ang, 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 ang sabi ni Lord nung una, balikan ko lang. Ano? Oh, yan. <clears throat> totally destroyed, sabi. Pero, iniwan nila si, ano, si King Agag and yung mga best sheep and cattle na sa tingin nila ay best and good. Uh, then, the word of the Lord came to Samuel, I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all night. So, <clears throat> nalaman ni Samuel, so, nag, um, nadismaya si Samuel, uh, siguro pinagpray niya. Pinagpray niya si Saul kay Lord. Verse 12, early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. Wala si Saul doon, nung pinuntahan niya. There, there he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone gone on down to Gilgal 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 when Samuel reached him Saul said the Lord bless you so, nakita na sila the Lord bless you sabi ni Saul I have carried out the Lord's instructions sabi ni Saul but Samuel said what then is this bleating of sheep in my ears what is this low, lowing of cattle that I hear? So may mga tumutunong na yung mga best cattle kasi, di ba, iniwan. So naririnig ni, ni Samuel yun. Ano itong mga bakang tumutunog, sabi niya, or nagangawa? Saul answered, the soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. Amalekites, they spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. So sabi niya, eh, mga kawal ko kasi, sila yung kumuha ng mga... Mga baka na yan eh, sabi niya. So, sabi ni Samuel, enough, sabi niya. Samuel said to Saul, enough, let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. So, sabi pa ni Saul, sige, sabihin mo sa akin, tell me. Sabi pa niya. Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel. And he sent you on a mission saying, 
go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? So, yun ang tanong ni Samuel kay Saul. <clears throat> but, sabi pa ni Saul, sumagot si Saul, but I did obey the Lord. Sumunod naman ako, ha, sabi niya. I went on the mission the Lord assigned, assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took, took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. So, sabi na naman ni Samuel, hindi, sumunod naman ako ah. Yun lang ang mga kawal. Yung mga kawal lang kumuha ng mga magagandang baka para isacrifice sa, sabi pa nga niya, your God eh. Ba? Sa Diyos mo, parang ganun. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He has rejected you as king. Then Saul's Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I, viola- I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men, and so I, give, I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sin. Come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to him, I will, go back with, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you. as king over Israel. So, yun. Yun ang kwento. No? Mahaba ng konti, ano? pero yun yun. Inutusan si, si ano? King Saul na, sige, labanan mo yung mga Amalekites, totally destroy them, wala kang iiwanan, pero may iniwanan siya. Ano? So, sabi ni Samuel, or si ni Lord sa kanya, through Samuel, You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you, king over Israel. So, rejected. Kaya yung title natin, rejected. So, bakit kaya na-reject si... Ano ba nakita natin? Why uh, was Samuel rejected? Yan ang tanong natin dito. Why King Saul pala, hindi Samuel? Why King Saul was rejected? <clears throat> so, babalikan natin ano, yung kwento para we can learn lessons because this story of Samuel may be, could be a lesson or uh, could be a lesson or a warning to us and uh, makita natin kung anong mga insights or lesson that uh, God wants us to learn through King Saul. So, why King Saul was rejected? So, balikan natin, ha? Verse 9, sabi ni Samuel, ang ginawa ni Samuel, oh, Saul pala. Saul, Samuel ako ng Samuel. Ha? Kanina pa ako. Ano? Nasaan ba si Samuel? Si Saul, oh. King Saul, oh. Si King Saul. Si King Saul, sabi niya, Uh, he spared Agag, the best of the sheep, and cattle, and lambs, and everything that was good. So, si King Saul, in-spare niya yung mga best. Sa tao, yung king, sa mga hayop, yung mga magagandang pwedeng pang-sacrifice. Diba? Tapos, sa uh, kanyang attitude, unwilling to destroy. Sabi niya, unwilling to destroy completely. So talagang ayaw niya, unwilling eh. So nung inutusan siyang ande, totally destroy mo diyan. Pero sa kanya, unwilling siya, unwilling to destroy. So sa tingin niya, good good yung mga cattle eh. Good din si King siguro. Eh ako bakit niya in, iniwan si King as uh, hindi niya pinatay. 
So isa yun sa mga one of, what, that's the first uh, reason or or makikita natin that Saul did in that story. He spared the king and that things that are seems good to his eyes and did not carried out the instructions of the Lord. Um, sabi kasi sa verse 9, uh, verse 1, naalala ko yung balikan ko lang yung verse 1. I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now, sabi niya. So sabi ni Lord, ako yung nag-anoint sa'yo na hari sa Israel. So listen now, sabi niya. So parang naalala ko lang kasi nandito si Pastor Reggie, parang dalawang last other Sunday, uh, listen yung, yung sermon sa atin. So sabi sa atin ngayon siguro, pangatlong listen, listen now, listen tayo. So balikan ko ulit. Yan. So si Saul, he, maybe he did not listen to God's instructions. Kasi he has, he has not carried out the instructions of the Lord. Or talagang, dyan eh, sabi niya unwilling talaga to, 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 to follow. And second, verse 12, early in the morning, sabi dito, when, when Samuel meet up King Saul, pinuntahan niya, wala siya doon. Pumunta sa Carmel. Anong gagawin niya doon? to set up his own monument. Anong, anong ginawa niya? Nagtayo siya ng sarili niyang monumento o ano tawag doon? Statue siguro. Uh, parang si Jose Rizal or si ano no? Tayo siya ng sarili niyang statue or monument. Siguro at para saan? For his, in his own honor. So, para sa kanyang sarili. Uh, Siyempre, tayo, statue, monument, di ba? Uh, ano yun? Uh, set up ka ng statue mo, sarili mong monumento. Uh, may, may konting ano doon, ano? may, may uh, pr- pr- proud ka doon sa accomplishment mo or sa sarili mo. Kasi para sa kanyang sarili, in his own honor. Hindi in the honor or glory of God. Kasi it is the Lord who anointed him king over Israel. And when he won the battle kaya sa mga Amalekites, siguro sabi niya, Mag- magaling ako. Kasi previous chapters will tell us na uh, hindi lang yung mga Amalekites ang mga natalo niya. Marami mga nations around them natalo na niya. So itong Amalekites, isa sa mga... I think malalakas na ano na kalaban nila or nation around them. So nung natalo niya, siguro naging proud siya no. Uh, magaling ako o uh, I'm really a king or ganun siguro. And uh, hindi siya nag-give ng honor kay Lord. So nagtayo siya ng sarili ang monument. Kung makikita natin yung mga ibang previous uh, kings, they set up monuments in honor for the Lord no. Kung sa babasahin natin ibang kings sa uh, uh, Old Testament, uh, normally pag nag-set up sila ng monument or is, uh, mga bato-bato, no, is uh, to make us a remembrance for the Lord. Pero ito, for His own honor. Remember na <clears throat> si, si King Saul ay tall, tall and handsome. So siguro, um, <clears throat> isa rin sa mga nag- uh, to make him proud of himself is not only his his uh, accomplishments but also his uh, his looks his uh, position his possession and power diba tinatawag ko parang naalala ko kasi 4p eh diba sikat yung 4p uh, diba? naririnig niyo yan yung 4p ng government yung binibigay 4 na p so, siya siguro recipient din siya ng four na piece yung kanyang posture. Yeah, handsome siya. Tall, handsome. Hindi ko lang kung dark. 
Baka tall, dark, and handsome ba siya? Or hindi naman sinabi, basta handsome siya. Uh, tall, taller than the Israelites, uh, most of the Israelites. Uh, Kitang-kita siya, no? So, ang posture niya, siyempre, it will also tikasin ako oh, siguro. Hindi katulad ko. Ayan, ganun. So, ganun. Yung posture niya, power niya bilang king, position niya bilang king, his also his possession also no, siguro nung nakita niya yung mga marami na siyang na, na, nakuha na doon sa mga uh, sa mga natalo niya sa mga wars no his possession and his uh, power naging uh, proud na siya sa sarili niya sa accomplishments niya so he set up his own monument and for his own honor Makikita natin sa, in other verse, yung nadaanan natin. Anong verse yun? Balikan ko lang, ha? Ulit. Yan. Verse 17, sabi ni Samuel sa kanya, You were once small in your own eyes. Nung, hindi pa siya siguro king, uh, bago-bago pa lang siyang king, medyo humble pa siya. Pero nung nagkaroon na siya ng four-piece, nakareceive na siya, baka, yung power and possession and posture and position, fame, medyo pumunta na sa utak niya, kaya or head niya, naging mayabang na, or proud na siya sa sarili niya. So, he set up his own monument for his own honor. Ang pangatlo, tingnan natin yung pangatlo na ginawa niya. Uh, when Samuel reached him, yun, nakita na sila ni Samuel and Saul said, The Lord bless you. Binati pa niya si Samuel. I have carried out the Lord's instruction, sabi niya. So, oh, ginawa ko yung sinabi mo, ha? o sinabi ni Lord. Totoo ba na ginawa niya? Hindi naman, di ba? Hindi naman niya pinatay la- lahat or he, he, he didn't totally destroy all. Uh, so, verse 15, Saul answered the... So- uh, ito pa, oh. Saul answered, the soldiers brought them. Kasi ano ba tong mga baka na uh, uh, sheep and cattle na, or sheep na, na, na narinig ko? Sabi niya, yung mga, yung mga, yung mga kawal eh. So ano yun? Hindi nung nabuking siya, na meron siyang tinatago na mga baka, nabuking siya, biglang nanuro, di ba? So nag finger point siya. Hindi niya accept yung responsibility. Bilang king or bilang leader of the Israelites uh, army, tinuro niya yung mga kawal niya. He did not take the responsibility, but he passed the blame on his soldiers. Uh, pero titingnan na. No? Tapos sabi niya, uh, they spared the best ship, but we totally destroyed the rest. Uh, nung tinuro niya yung mga, yung, yung nagtago, Sabi niya, sila yun. Pero yung mga pumatay sa mga the rest, kasi yun ang instruction eh. Kasama ako dun. Sabi niya, uwi eh. Diba? Kasama ako, kami. Kami ang pumatay dyan. Pero sila lang ang nagtago. Diba? So parang sa kanya, uh, he passed the blame and he, he, he don't take the responsibility or accountability for his actions. Or pwedeng Uh, ano siguro uh, gusto niyang itago lang or dis- i-deceive niya si-, si Samuel at that time so yun ang makita natin na three incidents or three uh, actions that King Saul did in this story kaya nung sinabi ni Lord sa kanya you are rejected or, ano. pero Siguro isipin lang natin ano uh, nag-inspire lang naman niya yung hindi naman niya pinatay yung ano na, maganda naman yung mga kalabaw o baka itinuro lang naman niya yung mga soldiers niya eh. Asa na isa? Nagtayo lang naman ng monumento. Anong yun lang ba reject ka na? Ba? Uh, tayo ba ginagawa din natin yun sa buhay natin? Minsan, oh, balikan natin. 
Yan. Minsan may mga ta- things ba na we are unwilling to destroy completely in our lives? Sabi ni Lord, uh, love the Lord your God above all things or with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your life. So all, love God above all. So meron bang, oh, hindi pwede ito. So meron bang things or something that we are unwilling to destroy na we think it is good in our own eyes na itabi, itabi ko to kasi maganda to eh. Monument. Pride. Pride chicken. Mahilig tayo sa KFC. Saka ano, no? Pride. Monuments. May mga pride pa ba tayo na nasa ating mga puso upang hindi natin makita yung ating sarili. When we uh, read the word of the Lord, As a mirror, di ba, pag nagbasa tayo, it should be a mirror that we look upon para makita natin yung sarili natin. But may may mga pride kaya sa ating mga buhay o sa ating mga sarili na hindi natin makita or nag, it, it, it keeps us blinded para hindi natin makita yung sarili natin. Or we cannot see our weaknesses, our sins. Or we cannot even forgive others. Kasi may pride pa. Mayroon mag-forgive. Mayroon magpatawad. So, mayroon magpatawad, anong gagawin natin? O, oh, turo mo na lang. Blame ka na lang. Ibi-blame mo na lang yung others. Oh, kasi hindi ko siya mapatawad. May pride ako. Or ano, hindi ko siya mapatawad. Kasi, mistake niya yun eh. Sila yun eh. Hindi ako yun. So we, we sometimes don't take responsibility of our actions, our words, uh, kung ano man ang nangyayari sa buhay natin. Minsan, naituturo natin yung oh, kasalanan ng tatay ko kasi hindi kami magkasundo. Or, uh. Pero, <clears throat> yan, sa buhay natin yan. But will God reject us? Kung ganyan ang ginagawa natin. Sasabihin natin, oh, yan lang naman eh. Malit lang na bagay. Nagtayo lang ng monumento. May konting pride lang sa sarili. Nanuro lang naman. Hindi naman, hindi naman tinapon yung magagandang bagay. Will God reject us. Pero what is the main real reason why God rejected King Saul? Yun lang bang tatlo? Tingnan natin sa verse 22, no? Kasi sabi niya, ito, sinacrifice ng mga soldiers yung mga magagandang baka at saka sheep, eh. Kaya nila tinago yan o kinuha yan. Sabi ni Lord, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. To heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He has rejected you as king. Sa so verse 26, nabasa natin kanina, and verse 23 dito, dalawang beses binanggit, You have rejected the word of the Lord. Ano ba reject niya talaga? And when you rejected the word of the Lord, ano meron doon? Meron siya kasing arrogance, no? Arrogance and pride. 
When you rejected the word of the Lord, meron kang unwillingness talaga. Ayaw mo talaga eh. Kahit nasabihin sa'yo, may instruction sa'yo, ayaw mo talaga. That's totally a rebellion, disobedience against the Lord. Refusal, refusal or refusing to obey. Talaga ayaw mo. Kahit nasasabihin sa'yo, ayaw mo eh. Sabi diyan, this rebellion or disobedience is like the sin of divination. Parang ang nagsusorcery, witchcraft. Or arrogance, yung, ano ba arrogance sa Tagalog? Yung <coughs> mayabang o matigas ang ulo, no? Talaga matigas ang ulo? Mayabang? O ambog? O ano? Talagang refusal or rebellion ah. because you have refusal refusing to obey rebellion disobedience yun ang talagang ayaw niya talaga ayaw niya talagang sumunod kay Lord bilang because the Lord is the one the, the one who anointed him as king ayaw niya na hindi man lang niya inacknowledge na si Lord ang nagbibigay sa kanya ng 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 yan yung kapangyarihan yung pagkapanalo niya sa mga battles hindi niya inaknalit si Lord rebellion is like a sin of divination refusal to obey disobedience parang sinabi na ni King Saul dito hindi hindi ako susunod sa iyo Lord ginaya niya si Adam when Adam chose the three of good of three of good of knowledge knowledge of good and evil three of knowledge of good and evil because he decided on himself na ako ang masusunod hindi si Lord kasi mas siguro arrogant siya eh, di ba mayabang siya oh, mas marunong ako mas magaling ako mas matalino ako pride came into his head Just like si Lucifer din, di ba? When Lucifer was, Lucifer pa siya, he, he was the best or isa sa mga magagandang archangel, di ba? But his beauty went to his head and sabi niya, oh, akit din ako sa langit, mas magaling ako kay Lord. Di-disobey ako, magre-rebellion ako. So, rebellion because of pride. Kaya, yun. Mas magaling ako, mas gwapo ako, mas tama ako, mas uh, matalino, ako mas ako ang pinakamas. Ganun. So, yun ang pinaka main reason why he was rejected. Because of his pride and unwillingness to obey, rejecting the word of the Lord, he decided on himself. Ko ano ang gagawin nanya? Inichap parang oh, in, tinanggal nanya si Lord sa picture. Ako na ang masusunod. Yeah. Yeah. So, reflection question sa yah. What is our attitude towards God laws and commands? Assignment natin pero pag munimunihan natin ng konti do we take God's word seriously or lightly when we hear our pastors our uh, when we read God's word when God tells us and to do this or what is our reaction to in taking God's word do we take it lightly or seriously or do we say oh ito ang mas magaling ako eh ginagalang ba natin ang salita ng Diyos what makes obedient difficult bakit kaya mahirap sumunod 
sa mga utos minsan ni Lord. Nakikita ba natin yan minsan? Mahirap. O, mahirap nga ba? O, yung pride lang natin, saka uh, arrogance lang natin ang nagpapahirap sa atin para sumunod. What or who can help us obey God faithfully as we should? Ano kaya ang mga bagay-bagay o sino kaya ang pwedeng uh, makatulong sa atin? Ano o kaya sino ang pwede kaya makatulong sa atin para makasunod tayo ng faithfully sa mga commands ni Lord sa atin? Kailangan pa bang paluin tayo? O kailangan pa bang itulak tayo? Or, or, or do we need our families, uh, our friends to help us? Or remind us, our prayer partners, maganda rin yun, di ba? Or kailangan pa bang dumaan tayo sa problems and uh, sicknesses or bad situations in our lives para sumunod tayo sa kay Lord? God expect us, uh, even the leaders of His nation at that time, at tayo ngayon, as sabi sa We are kings and priests. God expect us to be obedient to His will and to be examples sa ibang tao para ma- ma-encourage natin sila to obey God as well and to be uh, to follow His will and to obey His commands. So yan yung story ni King Saul. Patapos na po tayo. Sana yung lesson na yan, remind us that uh, of the things he did and the things he should not done and the things we should do. Rejected siya, but but who really rejected who? Sino ba talaga ang nag-reject? Basta manood. Yeah. Si King Saul ang nag-reject first, di ba? King Saul rejected first God. It is not God who rejected King Saul. Even at the time when the Israelites asked for a king, sila ang nag-reject kay God as their king. And King Saul rejected the word of the Lord. So he rejected God. It is King Saul who first rejected God. And just like in the Garden of Eden, it is Adam who rejected God. It is man who first rejected God. Pero God is faithful. Amen ba tayo doon? God is faithful in His promises. In His plan for us. He wants us and He, he is helping us to become real kings and priests in His kingdom. So, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, and for us who are in Christ, there's no more condemnation, di ba? Who then is the one who condemns? No one. No one will be rejected because of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, God has given us freedom to choose, freedom to choose life. So, let us choose life. Let us choose God. through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, yan ang true story ni King Saul. Hindi siya rejected. All of us are included through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Though man rejected God, God still included all. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen.